Good day, fellow investors. We have finally reached the core part of the margin of safety book, part two, chapter five, the core of the value investment philosophy. And the core of it is don't lose money. But what does that mean? Even Warren Buffett says rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. Now, this doesn't mean don't ever sell it to loss or something like that. This has a deeper meaning. And the meaning is that over several years, an investment portfolio should not be exposed to appreciable loss of principle, which means that when you invest, you have to watch that worst case scenario, you don't lose the principle. And if you focus on that, you are a value investor. For example, if you have a million and over the years, the first focus you should have is not to lose that million, not whether it will become 5 million or something else. Thus, the core is to concentrate on potential losses first. Value investing, focus on risk first. The reward will come by itself when you first focus on risk. And this is at odds with conventional market wisdom, which is time in the market beats the market. But as Seth Klarman says, and you can pause the video to read this beautiful chapter, there is an element to truth, of course, to being always invested, being fully invested, so to the fact that equities are inherently riskier than debt. But the difference here is that the actual risk of an investment cannot be determined by historical data. As they say, there is higher risk, higher reward because of higher volatility, past volatility. The main difference with value investing and efficient market hypothesis, everything else, is that the risk is determined by the price paid, not by the previous volatility, which means you are invested if the price is right. If the price isn't right, you are not invested in the market, no matter what the predominant mantra is. So it depends on the price paid. Thus, the most important thing is risk is a function of price. And I see this as a step forward when it comes to investing. Yes, everything is beautiful. You invest for the long term, you hold that beautiful businesses, watch them grow, buy more in dips. But by not focusing on the risk, you miss a big, big opportunity of lowering your risk and therefore allowing for more compounding. The last 40 years have been great for investors but the risks now are much higher than 40 years ago because prices are different and the returns are certainly not going to be equal to what has been the case for the last 40 years. So value investing is, yes, based on fundamentals and everything, but risk focusing beats even time in the market, according to Seth Klarman. And then, of course, if enough investors believe the argument that equities will offer the best long-term returns, they may pour money into stocks, bidding price up to levels at which they no longer offer the superior returns. Exactly what we have now in the world with the index fund mania. The risk of loss stemming from equity's place in the capital structure is exacerbated by paying a high price. The market thinks high risk, high reward. The reality is value investing, low risk, the higher will be your reward. Counterintuitive, hard to understand, but works. So this is the general efficient market, risk return trade-off, low risk, low return. You invest in bonds, you get this. If you want more, you need to invest in Teslas and high volatility and higher return. But that is the common believe that risk avoidance is incompatible with investment success. This view holds that high return is attainable only by incurring high risk and that long-term investment success is attainable only by seeking out and bearing rather than avoiding risk. Seth Klarman believes that risk avoidance is the single most important element of an investment program. And he explains that of course, this is the modern portfolio theory, more risk, more returns, then diversified and you get the best return. This is all beautiful in a mathematical model, but the reality is that then life comes to your finances, to your life, to your decisions, to your retirement fund. And there you don't want to take risk because some Nobel laureate 
figured it out 50 years ago. No, you want reality, thus you are risk averse, and thus you are a value investor because you know that that will lead you to your financial goals. And as said Klarman says, if you are one of the vast majority of investors who are risk averse, then loss avoidance must be the cornerstone of your investment philosophy. And if you don't lose money, you allow for compounding and even if you just start with 1,000 at 6%, in 30 years, it's almost 6,000, 30,000 at 12%, but you must allow for compounding, which means no losses, no destructions of principle. Therefore, the importance of slow and steady, and we're going to go through an example. If an investor does 10 years at 16%, he will do better than one doing 20% for nine years, and losing 15% the last year. The problem is that all the investors will go from that money manager doing 20% for nine years because he's a genius like Cathy Wood or something like that, instead of focusing on the risk because that's such a big problem with people. And here we have a great example. This is a chart showing 10 years, $1,000, 12% compounding, 16% and 20% compounding. The results are here. 3,000, 4,000, and 6,000, all normal. Now, I have taken nine years here, cut out the 10th year, and you can see that 20% is $5,159. If in the 10th year you lose 15%, these 5,000 go to 4,358. Compare that to year 10, and you can see that it is less than the guy that made 16% year after year without losing money made. Thus, focusing on risks allows you to avoid risk and compound with more certainty, which in the long term even increases your long term return, your compounding rate. It's hard to grasp this, but it is the essence of value investors and it has worked for Buffett, for Klarman for decades, while it didn't work for many others. Another example, if you invest for the long term, this is 15% versus 10%, 1,000 over the long term. Of course, the difference is huge. But if you take more risk to chase crazy returns, at some point the risk will materialize. That is the key to understand. If you take risk, sooner or later the risk will materialize. And I think those investing in growth stocks over the last decade now are seeing those risks materialize and Katie Wood's funds are in the dumpster because the risks are materializing, no matter the great rewards in the past. And if you check this, compare the 10% with 15% and you have in 30 years just a 40% decline every 10 years and even here in the last years, with 15% you are below a steady compounding growth at 10%. That is a huge difference and that is what works. And there is an understandable, uneconomic appeal to the better returns because everybody likes the better return compared to the safer, lower risk. And the second investor will outperform the former nine years out of 10, gaining considerable physical income from this apparently superior performance. If both investors are money management professionals, the latter may also have a happier clientele, 90% of the time they will be doing better and thus a more successful company. This may help to explain why risk avoidance is not the primary focus of investors, YouTubers and institutional investors. And one of the recurring themes of this book is that the future is unpredictable, no one knows whether the economy will shrink or grow, how fast, what the rate of inflation will be and whether interest rates and share prices will raise or fall. Nobody knows. Investors intent to avoiding loss consequently must position themselves to survive and even prosper under any circumstances. Bad luck can befall you, mistakes can happen, the river may overflow its banks only once or twice in a century, but you will still buy flood insurance on your house each year. Similarly, we may only have one or two economic depressions or financial panics in a century, we will have them more often and it's happening more often. And hyperinflation may never ruin the US economy. 
Huh? But the prudent, foresighted investor manages his or her portfolio with the knowledge that financial catastrophes can and do occur. Investors must be willing to forego some near-term return, if necessary, as an insurance premium against unexpected and unpredictable adversity. Next step is don't target returns, focus on risk. Because investing is, okay, we're going to invest for this return or that return, and that is more often impossible than not, because your focus on gains leads to risks. And rather than targeting a desired rate of return, and even an imminently reasonable one, investors should first target risk when it comes to investing. That's the core of value investing. Most investment approaches do not focus on loss avoidance or on an assessment of the real risks of an investment compared with its return. Only one that I know does value investing. That's the core of value investing. Chapter 6 describes value investing. Chapter 7 elaborates on three of its central underpinnings. We are all going to discuss that. But the core of this chapter is risk first because that allows for compounding and increases your wealth for sure. I'll see you in the next chapter as we are touching the core of what might save you millions, if not billions, in your lifetime. I hope you enjoy this.